Okay, welcome everybody. This is the London Hug, the virtual London Hug. It's exactly two o'clock and uh, we will be kicking off shortly. We're going to leave it a couple of minutes just to get everybody on board. Um, and while that is happening, you can see a slide or you will be able to see a slide uh, from Rachel, who is going to talk you through the new HubSpot CMS, the CMS Hub, which we're really excited to see. Um, because we're British, you can't tell that we're excited, but honestly, we are. Uh, and it, it's 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 a it's a real change um, in in direction and, and a major advancement from from HubSpot. Uh, my name is Cluid Probert. For everybody who has seen me up on stage, that's been a while. Uh, I am the leader of the London Hub, and the HubSpot user group uh, in the city. Uh, we are White Hat. We're a HubSpot uh, Platinum Level agency, and it's our role to sort of facilitate these meetings for the Hub community. Happy to do that. Just some admin uh, for everybody. Uh, again, Rachel's going to talk about this. There's going to be an opportunity for you to work alongside Rachel as she talks you through the, through the, the CMS system. Um, and there will be a link. You should have had one in an email, but we'll, we'll give it you anyway to allow you to run a sandbox version of the website developer uh, alongside the, the presentation. In terms of length, this is going to be about an hour, give or take. We're going to have an opportunity for some questions at the end. We also have a number of HubSpotters online who are tracking those questions. Uh, they will respond in chat. So if you've got something to say, you want us to cover something, then stick it in the chat. We will try and cover it during the session. Uh, or at the end of the session. If we don't get a chance to do that, then this is being recorded. The slides and the video will be available to everybody. It'll go out through the HubSpot community link, which again, we will publish through the chat. And we will try and answer any questions that we miss uh, on that community page. Okay. And I think already a couple of people are having some problems with the sandbox. And um, maybe Rachel can cover that during her, her, her talk to see if we can cover that. Um, again, don't worry too much if you can't do it as we, as we speak. You will have a recording. You can, we will fix any technical issues with you getting access to the sandbox so that you can then uh, go through it directly. Um, with yourself later. Okay, I'm really got nothing else to say. If everybody else is happy, we can probably kick off. I'd like to introduce you to Rachel Sheldon, who is a HubSpot Academy professor based out of Boston. So this is definitely an international meeting. Um, so Rachel, over to you, take it away. Great, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sharing my screen, so let me just present this and let me know if you can see that. Give me just a thumbs up or a yes in the chat if you can see my screen all right. Perfect. Um, I noticed someone asked uh, how long the sandbox environment will last. I believe it's 90 days, uh, but it will definitely last for the duration of this. Uh, of this session. So hello everyone, uh, I'm Rachel and I'm here to walk you through a hands-on workshop for creating pages in the CMS Hub. So here's a quick agenda of what we're going to cover today in about a little bit under an hour probably. Uh, just a quick introduction and an icebreaker. We'll go through what is the new CMS Hub uh, and then cover in a little bit more detail how themes and drag and drop page editing work. Uh, and once we've covered those, we'll dive into our activity for the second half of the session, um, following along with me, creating a page in your Sandbox account. If you already have a CMS account, you can use that. You can use a Sandbox environment, or you can just watch and follow along, take notes, um, do whatever you want to do. 
We'll have a little bit of time at the end for Q&A, uh, quick recap, and some further resources so you can continue learning. So as I said, I'm Rachel. I'm an inbound professor for HubSpot Academy, uh, focused on educating and inspiring people about HubSpot's CMS Hub. Right now, I'm working remotely from my apartment in Boston um, and spending a lot of my time baking, taking care of my plants, uh, and learning how to do embroidery. It's been my new hobby that I've picked up over the last few weeks. So just a little bit of background on HubSpot Academy. Um, for those of you who might not be familiar with us, uh, HubSpot Academy is the worldwide leader in free online training for inbound marketing, sales, and customer service. Uh, we specialize in certifications, courses, and lessons uh, for people looking to grow their business or their career. And our purpose, why we exist as a team, is to educate and inspire so that we together can transform the way the world does business. So that's a little bit of background on me and where I'm coming from. Before we dive in, let's do a quick recap on Zoom. Um, you'll all be muted and have your video off during the whole webinar. This will just keep everything easy. Uh, but if you have any questions, you can stick them in the Q&A section and I'll address those at the end in our Q&A portion. Or if you want to chat with other attendees or show examples, um, feel free to use the chat function. I see a lot of people are using that right now. So as we mentioned, um, you will need access to a CMS Hub account in order to complete this activity. I believe Megan put this link into the, uh, into the chat already. So when you go to create, a, to create an account, you can just continue with your existing HubSpot login. It will create a new, brand new sandbox in, instance of a CMS portal uh, with your existing login credentials. So it's super easy and quick, but the sandbox is totally separate from your, um, hub, from your regular HubSpot portal. So you can mess around and do whatever you want in there and it won't affect any of your live HubSpot data. If you don't have a HubSpot account yet or you really want to separate the two, you want to use your personal email for some reason, um, you can just click the create account with new user button um, and just create a fully new profile. So hopefully that answers uh, some of the questions. And let's get started with a quick icebreaker. So put in the chat where you're located in the world. I know a lot of people are probably from London. Um, I'm in Boston. There may be some people logging in from other areas of the world. So just uh, put that in the chat. And uh, if you're baking or cooking anything right now, uh, put that in the chat as well. My latest project this past weekend was making bagels, which was quite an involved process, uh, but definitely doing a lot of eating and baking. Double chocolate chip cookies, toffee cookies, hobnobs. I love hobnobs or digestives, the chocolate digestives. Those are the best. Making cheesecake, ooh, that's good. I love asking this question because it just gives me lots of ideas for what I should be baking next. <laughs> all right, awesome. Looks like we've got some people from all over. Cool. All right, let's dive into what we're here to talk about today, which is HubSpot's new CMS Hub. And we'll go through this pretty quickly, but let's take a step back first and just talk about your website. So your website is your business's home on the web. It's your most important digital asset. It's the first place people are gonna go to learn about you, your business, your products, your services. It is really your address on the internet. In HubSpot study, in HubSpot study that we did late last year, we found that a business website is the most used distribution channel for marketers. So I'm gonna launch a quick poll right now and let me know if you have a website, yes or no. Feel free to vote and I'll give you a few minutes on this or a few seconds. Yes, yes, yes. Seeing lots of yeses stream in, a couple no's. All right, cool. Looks like pretty much everyone has a website, which is nice to hear. So a quick follow-up question. Is there anything that you'd like to change about your website? Answer in the poll, yes or no. 
Again, seeing a lot of yeses stream in, a couple of noes. Awesome, so we're at about 90% yes. So it seems like a lot of people in this session are looking to change something about their existing website. So in the same study that HubSpot ran late last year, we found that 63% of marketers are investing in some sort of website upgrade in 2020. There's something that they want to change about their site, whether that's a complete site redesign, a migration to a new CMS, adding in more SEO or lead generation functionality, um, including more advanced security protocols, some sort of website upgrade um, this year. That's what the vast majority of marketers are saying, which is really interesting. A lot of those upgrades actually come with a lot of pain. As companies grow, they're forced to spend more time managing their systems than focusing on their customers. They spend a lot of time updating plugins, uh, working through complicated workflows, get, trying to get developer IT resources to fix simple things on their site. And they're spending so much energy and time on those aspects rather than focusing on what's truly important, which is the customer experience. So this is where HubSpot CMS Hub was kind of born with this idea of less pain, more gain. We want you to spend more time focusing your energy on creating an incredible customer experience and really delighting your customers throughout the buyer's journey and less time kind of bogged down in system management. So the CMS Hub from HubSpot is positioned really nicely between legacy enterprise CMSs that are super powerful for developers but don't really give much control to the marketer and simple web page builders, which are very powerful for marketers. They give them a lot of control but don't have the kind of flexibility to integrate marketing efforts um, or more advanced features that the HubSpot CMS Hub gives you. So we'll just quickly cover the two tiers of uh, CMS Hub. There is CMS Hub Professional, which is if you've been previously with HubSpot and used our CMS, this is sort of what we had before, but repackaged and very much upgraded. And then there's the CMS Hub Enterprise, which uh, has everything from professional, but you can build really powerful web app experiences. You can have control and governance at scale over your brand. Um, a lot of really awesome features for more growing teams. Here's a quick breakdown of all the features in CMS Hub. Uh, you can see these on the product page if you just Google HubSpot CMS Hub. These will all come up with a lot more detail. But today we're going to focus specifically on drag and drop page editing and themes. These are two, in my opinion, of the coolest new features of the CMS Hub, and it really revolutionized the way that marketers can create content um, in the CMS. So that's what we're going to dive into a little bit and actually start using today. So what are themes and drag and drop page editing? So themes do two things primarily. They allow developers to create a site-wide content editing experience that puts the marketer in control over their website. And it allows marketers to make changes to their website without needing a developer for maintenance and without needing to know HTML or CSS. So a theme is essentially a collection of assets designed to work together. It contains a set of templates, like you can see in the screenshot here, that all have the same branding. They've got the same look and feel, and they're designed to create a cohesive website experience. So templates are files that control the layout and functionality of your page. They are sort of a starting point for building a page, but they're fully customizable with the drag and drop page editing feature, uh, which we're going to go into in a little bit. And finally, pages are the finished product that you fill with your content and publish for the world to see. One really important thing to know about themes is that your theme is your source of truth when it comes to your website's design. Your theme controls the overarching design and branding of your entire website, and it helps you create that consistent experience that in turn creates a really positive user experience for the end user. So your theme is the source of truth. It is where you want to go when you are deciding on the style for your website and changing the style for your website. And the way you will make these changes is in your theme settings. So every theme has these controls 
these knobs and dials that allow you to make really quick and easy styling changes to your entire site. Um, and when you publish these changes, as you can see highlighted on this slide, uh, it will publish to all of the assets within the theme to maintain that consistency. And it's sort of a one-click publish, super simple um, and really easy to make changes at scale. So there's a few different types of themes you can get in CMS Hub. You can get a theme custom built by a developer, either on your own team or working with a solutions partner. Uh, there are pre-made HubSpot themes included by default in all CMS Hub portals. That's what we're going to work with today, one of those pre-made themes. Um, they're really great and sort of customized uh, for different types of businesses, but again, they're all fully customizable. And then a couple more options. You can download themes from the Asset Marketplace or if you have your website migrated from another CMS to HubSpot, by HubSpot, um, we'll create a custom theme to suit your website. So moving on to drag and drop page editing, uh, as you can see sort of in this GIF here, it allows you to easily design and create pages without any knowledge of HTML and CSS. Um, we're gonna dive into this a lot when we get to the workshop portion, but there's a quick little GIF to show you how it works. Another important thing to know when you're creating content in the CMS is that every page in the CMS is created using a template. Really important to keep that in mind because it's sort of fundamental to understanding how the system works as a whole. The type of template that you choose will determine the type of content that you can create using that template. Templates are suited for different types of content. So we have page templates for website and landing pages. There are blog templates for your blog post and blog listing pages. And then there are system templates. And system templates are for your standard site pages, like your error pages, your password page. These are a little bit of a different type of template than page and blog. Um, so I'm not gonna cover these in this workshop, but there's a link in the resources if you want to learn more. So the relationship between templates and pages isn't one-to-one, -one, it's actually one-to-many. You can use the same template to create dozens or even hundreds of different pages. There's also modules, which are the building blocks of templates. Um, and in the CMS, there are three main types of modules. There's common modules, which are sort of the standard elements you expect to see on a website, like a text box or an image or a form. These are all included by default in the CMS. Then there's theme modules, which are modules designed to fit specifically with your theme. So for example, if you have a you know, fitness studio theme, you may have a theme module that's a class listing. And this comes packaged with the theme and is designed to work with that theme. So we'll see those uh, when we get into the workshop today. And the last type of module are custom modules. These are modules that are custom coded by a CMS developer. There's a ton of flexibility with custom modules and you can really do almost anything. The sky's the limit um, if you have the development resources. So one more thing about modules is that the relationship between modules and templates, similar to the relationship between templates and pages, is one to many. You can use the same module many, many times across different templates and in turn across different pages. The last thing we're gonna talk about when it comes to creating content in the CMS before we actually get started is global content. So global content is content that you want to create once and then reuse multiple times across your website. A really great example of global content is your website's header and footer. You wanna create these elements once, get them looking nice, and then use them in the same exact way across your whole website to create consistency in the user experience. Um, and if you had to be creating that header again and again and again for every page, that would be kind of a pain. So with global content, you just create it once and then it's included in the same exact way across your entire site. So in CMS, you can actually edit your global content right from the page editor. So you can see here, I'm editing the page header of uh, my website page. And when you publish those changes, those changes will propagate across your entire site. So if you have 150 pages on your website and you change your logo and your header, uh, it will change across all 150 pages. So this is a really quick and easy way to create uh, global changes across your site's content. So now that we've covered all the basics of CMS Hub and sort of gotten a look at how it works. I think the best way to learn is to just 
get started, dive in and start using it yourself. So our activity for the, the most of the rest of our time together is going to be to create our first page in CMS Hub. So you can use your developer sandbox account um, to get free access to the entire suite of CMS tools. I believe for 90 days, it may be 14. Don't quote me on that, uh, but it'll definitely be enough time for you to uh, play around with all these tools. Uh, we're going to do this activity together, so I'll be showing you on my screen what I'm doing, and you can follow along in your own account, um, or if you want to go off and explore the, explore the tools on your own, feel free. If you want to just listen and watch what I'm doing, feel free to do that as well. It's completely up to you. So here's the steps that we're going to follow, um, and I will put these into the chat as well, so we can, if you want to follow along on your own, feel free to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is head in our account to the website pages dashboard and create a new website page or landing page. We're gonna pick a theme from one of the pre-built HubSpot themes and then select a template from that theme. Then we're gonna customize the theme settings, specifically the colors and fonts, and I'll show you some more options in there too. We're gonna to work on how to rearrange the page layout using the drag and drop page editor, how to add content to the page and some styling, how to preview the page on mobile devices, and then I'll show you how you can grab the page preview link. And if you want to stick that in the chat for me to take a look at, um, feel free to do that. So let me add these into the chat. All right. Now let me head over to my account. So this is my developer sandbox account. As you can see, I've got my regular login, but it'll say HubSpot dash developers. Those are all my other accounts. Um, and that's how you know that it is your sandbox. It'll say HubSpot slash developers. So the first step is to head to our website pages dashboard. So click on marketing in the main menu, hover over website, and I'm going to select website pages. You can select the landing pages or blog as well. It will take you to, if it loads, <laughs> to a different tab within your whole website dashboard. It's broken out by these three buckets to help you maintain organization in your CMS. Um, but let's start with website pages today. As you can see, I've already done a couple tests. <laughs> So to create a new page, head up into the upper right corner, click create, and I'm going to create a new website page. So click website page. And here you'll see the options for the different themes. If you click on HubSpot themes in the left sidebar, these are all the pre-built HubSpot themes that come included with the CMS. So let's see, we've got sort of a fitness themed one, got an education themed one, but even though some of these are more geared towards different industries, I'm gonna show you that they can be customized for really any industry. So I'm gonna pick this barricade theme, which is sort of more of a manufacturing automotive type theme, but I'm actually gonna customize it for my website, my fake company, which is going to be the Green Thumb. It's an online plant nursery. So when you select, select your theme, you'll be taken to the next screen, which is the template options within that theme. So you'll see there's a few different options here. We've got home page, a nice landing page template, an about page template, a blank one that you can use for anything you want. But I want to create a home page for my site. So I'm going to select home and then give your page a name. This is just an internal name purely for organizational purposes. This will never be public facing to your visitors. So I'm going to call this London Hug webinar page and click create. So while I'm here, I'm just going to launch a poll. Let me know when you're ready to move on.
Uh, someone asked, do you need the Pro CMS if you're going to be using HubSpot for blog management? Um, yes, you can get CMS Professional, which includes blog and the rest of a website. If you're only using HubSpot for your blog, uh, you can also use Marketing Hub Professional. Um, that includes a blogging tool, but it doesn't include the rest of your website. So if you have your website hosted elsewhere and you're not planning to move it over to HubSpot, you can just host your blog through Marketing Hub Professional. All right, I'll leave this up for a few more seconds so some more people can get caught up. All right, let us move on. Okay. So now we're taken into the page editor. As you can see, it's trying to get me to add a page title. We're gonna skip that for right now. And let's take a quick overview of the different parts of the editor. So in the left sidebar, you'll see three tabs. In the add tab, you have your different module options that you can add into your page, just dragging them in, which we'll show in a little bit. As you can see, we've got some theme modules that are designed for this particular theme and our regular common modules. Next in the contents tab, you just have an overview of all of the modules on your page in the order they appear. And then finally, the design tab. And this is where you see your theme and you can edit your theme settings, which is where we're going to head next. I'll just give a quick overview of the other parts of the editor before we do that. So right now we're in the content portion. If you look in the top menu bar, uh, this is obviously the contents of your page. If you go over to the settings tab, you'll see the different settings such as your title, your domain, meta description. Next is the optimize tab, and this is where you can optimize your page for SEO. There's a bunch of different recommendations in here. Obviously, I haven't added any content yet, so these aren't checked off, but when you uh, complete one of these optimizations, you get a little green check mark. And finally, there's the schedule tab, which is where you can publish your page or schedule it for later. So let's hop back to the contents tab and click on design in the left sidebar. And then click on edit theme settings. This is going to open up your theme previewer and theme editor. So in the center here, you'll see the preview of the theme you're working with. You can toggle between the different templates in the theme up top with the drop down menu next to the view on. So if I want to look at how my theme is going to appear on the about page, I can switch over to that. And as you make changes, they will propagate across all of these templates. So let me hop back to the home page since that's the one I'm going to be working on today. And I wanna change the colors first. This orange is not really working for me for my plant website. So under the colors drop down menu, let's click on that. And I'm gonna change my primary color to this nice green. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Change my secondary color from that navy to a dark gray. And then for the body background color, I want this to be sort of a fun, whimsical website. So I'm going to make this a nice light pink. And as you can see, if you scroll down the previewer, all these changes are being automatically applied. So I'm liking how those colors are looking, but I'm not really liking this font. It's a bit too bold, too graphic, um, and I want to change that to something a little bit more in my company's branding. So under the fonts drop down, click on the little arrow to open that up. I'm going to change the primary font to Open Sans. This is a Google font. And I'll change the weight to light. Next, let me change my secondary font. I want to use a nice serif font. So let's pick this one. And that looks good. I'm much happier with how that looks. So your changes will be saved automatically, but you can also click the apply changes button uh, if you want to do that. 
And when you're done, select publish in the upper right corner. And so this is going to publish to 18 assets, every asset that's included in my theme. Yes, I'm happy with that. And I'll click publish and return to page editor. All right, so now that we're back in the page editor, you can see that all of my changes that I made to my theme settings are applied automatically to the page that I'm working on. So the next thing I want to show is how you can change the page layout using the drag and drop page editor. So the first thing I want to do is I want to remove this logo carousel right here. It doesn't really suit my company. So I want to remove the entire section, hover over the section, click the little drop down arrow and click delete section. And that's gone. Perfect. Now, I like this section, but I want to move it up a little bit more on the page. So I'm going to hover over it and hold down this section and I'm going to drag it up here and drop it and it automatically changes the location, which is pretty great. So the next thing I want to do down in this newsletter section is I want to add a form. So over in the add tab in the left sidebar, I'm going to find my form module, grab it, drag it, and I could have it on the left, above, below, I'm going to put it below. So I'll just drop it right there and it automatically appears. So you can do this with any of the modules in here. You can mess around with the layout of your page, move things around, move things up and down, remove things. You can also clone portions. So say I wanted to have two of these, I can hover over it click this and click clone. And you can just very easily change the page layout um, with a few simple clicks. So the next thing I want to do is just change some of this page content. I'll go through a couple things here and then I will just launch a quick poll on what you all would like to see me do. So just quickly, how to edit some of the page content. So if I want to edit this text, I'm just going to click here in the editor. And I can just edit it right from within the page. I'm going to change this to welcome to the green thumb, which is my company name. And Let's change this as well. Awesome. So one more thing, if I want to change this image right here, I'll click on edit module and I'm going to replace this with an image of some of my plants. So this will pull up the file manager in HubSpot, which is where you can store all of your files, your images, and so on. I've included these just so I have some content to work with. You can also click add image at the bottom. There's also a Canva integration if you want to create some designs with Canva, which is pretty cool. I'm going to click this image. And there's a couple sizing options here. I want to automatically adjust the size of this image to fit the height and width of my module. But you can also choose to have the exact width and width and height of your image as well. This is already saved, but I can click apply changes as well to see how it looks on the page. So now we're starting to make some real progress on this page, but I want to see what you all would like to see demonstrated. So just launched a poll and vote on which of these you want to see me demonstrate on my page. I'll try to get to as many of them as possible, uh, but also want to make sure I leave a little bit of time for you to all play around in your accounts um, while I make some more changes. All right, 
so it seems like a lot of people want to see how to customize a theme module. I'll show how I can customize the content in this theme module. This is a card section. Let me just go back. So this card section is one of the theme modules that come with this particular theme. Obviously it has a lot of this construction type content in here and I wanna change that. So I'll hover over it and click the little edit module button. And this has six cards. I don't have that many different products so I'm gonna delete the last three. In this first one, I'll hover over it, click the little edit button. I'm gonna replace that icon with one of my own icons and change this title. I could change the text down here, change the link, a few more options, but that seems good for now. Let me apply my changes so we can see how this affected the page. Awesome, now my content is in there. So let me just go back and change the other two. And depending on the theme module that you're working with, uh, all these options will change. So if you have a theme module for a pricing page or a pricing table, uh, the options there will be a little bit different than what's in here. But this is just to show you some examples of, uh, of what you can do. All right. Let me apply my changes and see how that looks. I'm pretty happy with that. Next, let me take a look at how to change your navigation menu. So this is part of my global header. So up here at the top, this is not my default. This is not my menu. This is the default logo, not my logo. So I'm going to change all of this. So I'll hover over that and click the little edit module button. This will give me a pop-up saying that I'm editing global content just so that you know that this is not a regular module, it's a global module. I'll click open in global content editor. So this header has logo and navigation. That's it, that's all I need personally. So I'm fine with that. I'm gonna click on the primary navigation and instead of the default menu, I'm gonna choose my header nav. I already created this in my navigation settings. If you need to create a new navigation menu, you can click this little create new button and it'll take you out to your uh, navigation settings. So quickly, let me also change my logo cause this is not my logo. And here we are. All right, that's much too big. So I'll change the width of that to, let's say 50 pixels. I'm happy with that. And in the upper right corner, I'll publish it to all the assets that this header is used on. So the last thing I'm gonna show is how to change the background image on a section. Um, this is a really common thing that people struggle with to do, struggle to do with CSS or HTML, but it's really, really easy to do it with the drag and drop page, page editor. So I'll show you how to do that now. And then we'll take a little bit of free time. I'll put on some music in the background um, so we can work for a few minutes on uh, some different aspects of the page. So let me change the background image on this section. I'm gonna hover over it. And next to the section, click the little arrow. These are your controls. And click style section. I can change the spacing and I can also change the background. So if I select background, you can choose no background, a color, a gradient, or an image. So in my case, I have this image. I'm gonna click replace. And I like the way that this one will look. So I'm gonna keep this resized to fill container because this is just a kind of patterned background image. I'm not very particular about what part is shown, but if you have an image that's more detailed and you want to make sure that all of the image is shown, you can select to resize to show entire image. Just make sure that the image dimensions uh, fit what you need for your page. So 
Let me change one more. I'll change this one too. And see, this is one where it's resized to show entire image. Since my image is not wide enough to fit the entire screen, I'm gonna change this to resize to fill container. Easy. So now we've got, let's say we'll take about five minutes. I'll put a little bit of music on in the background. If it's too loud and you want me to turn it down or you want me to turn it off, just let me know. I just think it's better than listening to me just breathing and tapping. Um, I'll go through making a few more changes to this page. Uh, you can follow along or you can go off and uh, explore some more of the page editor yourself. And a few people asked how to style a form. I'm gonna show that right now. I'm not gonna talk through it in case other people are doing other things, but if you wanted to know how to style a form for your entire theme, I'll show that right now. Rachel, uh, we also have a really good question in here is if you have a template designed for you by a developer, if there is an option to just turn on the design options afterwards. Uh, didn't know if you wanted to kind of walk through sort of what that, what that might look like. Sorry, it's, I missed the beginning of that. Is, is that the most recent question in the chat? If you have a template designed for you by a developer, is there an option to turn on the design options? That's it. Okay, yeah. So it depends on the template that you have designed. If it was previous to uh, the new CMS Hub upgrade into themes and drag and drop page editing, um, the developer will have to rework it to fit within this new functionality. Um, but if you have a custom theme with uh, templates designed for you by a developer, uh, they can decide which design options are editable and which are not editable. Um, some people prefer to not have any of the options editable. They have the design exactly the way they want it and they don't want any changes. Or they can make it like these pre-made themes are and have all of the design options editable. But it's really going to depend on when that theme or that template was built for you and whether it was built with theme functionality or not. Hope that was helpful. Uh, I'm going to finish up this form right here and just edit these fields a little bit and then we can get back to some of the questions. Okay, so I just made a few changes to my form styling. Let me head back into the page editor. 
So when you are done or at least have made some progress with your page and you wanna take a look at how it appears on different devices, head up into the upper right corner and click the preview button. And this will open the device simulation, which will show you how your page is going to look on different device types. So I can look on tablet, look on mobile, you can see there's this nice mobile menu built in here. Um, and this will just help you make sure that users on all different devices are having a good experience. If you wanna share the preview link, head to the upper right corner and click copy shareable link. And if you wanna put it into the chat, I'll put mine in. This will open up and you can share it with anybody, even if they're outside of your organization or outside of your HubSpot portal. So that is just a quick overview of some of the things that you can do with the drag and drop page editor and themes in HubSpot. There's a lot more uh, that I didn't show, but I have some more resources uh, back in our slide deck where you can keep learning. So. Let's head back in there now. And great. That was the poll. We already did that. Okay, so now we're into our Q&A section. We've got a little bit of time left here. So let me take a look at some of the questions that we have gotten. I'm just reading through these now. Where can you customize or adjust SEO metadata for individual pages on the site? Um, if you go into the settings tab of the individual page, you can customize like the meta description um, and there are some advanced options in there as well. Um, in terms of customizing the SEO uh, functionality, the different options for your entire website. If you click the settings icon in the upper right corner of the screen, that will bring you to your settings for your entire account. There's a website option uh, where there's lots of different things you can change. You can customize your robots.txt file. Uh, you can add in different code into your header or footer HTML. Um, there's a lot of different options you can do there, but it's all from either the settings of your account or the settings of the individual page or blog post. Uh, if you look up on the HubSpot knowledge base, how to customize whatever specific thing you're looking to customize. There will be a knowledge doc walking you through step-by-step step better than I can just do speaking right now. Um, the barricade template is not in the marketplace. It's included automatically in all CMS portals. So when you're creating a new page in your CMS, either developer sandbox account, or if you have a CMS portal yourself, um, it will be listed under the HubSpot themes option in the left sidebar. If you select HubSpot themes, you'll see all the pre-built HubSpot themes, which includes that barricade theme. And those are all included for free with every account. I think we got a few more questions in the chat. And Courtney's adding some links in there for different questions. Thank you, Courtney. In terms of checking if the design options can be enabled for your website, um, contacting support might help. It depends on who built your website for you. If you worked with uh, a solutions partner agency, uh, you should contact them. If you contracted out to a developer, you should contact them. Uh, it's going to depend completely on who built your website. If HubSpot built your website for you, if you were migrated, uh, then you can definitely reach out to support and, and they should be able to help you. Sorry if you can hear my upstairs neighbors walking around. This is the joys of uh, trying to run a webinar from your apartment. And if you're a developer, there's lots of um, resources for developers. There's a, there are a couple linked in the resources section here. Um, the developer website is really gonna be your best resources. I believe it's just developers.hubspot.com. Um, but if you just search HubSpot developer or HubSpot CMS developer, that whole website has a ton of documentation. There's also the CMS for developers certification course that you can go through. Um, and that will go through all the step-by-step -step resources for how to create these new types of websites in HubSpot. 
Um, someone asked about Google Fonts. Um, Google Fonts are actually included automatically in um, CMS Hub. That's one of the new cool upgrades. As you saw, I was able to add that Open Sans font. It was included by default. Um, if you have other custom fonts like, uh, like Adobe Typekit, um, there are resources on Knowledge Base if you search on there for the step-by-step -step on how to do that. Hey, Rachel, I've got a question. Yes. Um, just a simple, well, maybe not so simple one. You mentioned at the start and, and HubSpot have announced that there's two different levels of the CMS. There's the professional and, and there's the enterprise. Um, could you maybe just for the community explain why somebody might go up to the enterprise level, what, what the major differences are between the two? Yeah, definitely. So um, the enterprise CMS includes some really cool features for creating serverless functions. So if you have a, a basically a web app that you want to integrate as part of your website, you can do that with the enterprise CMS. Um, I'm not a developer, so I can't, I don't really understand all the nuts and bolts of how that works, but I've seen it in action and it's really cool. So like if you're a fitness studio and you have a you know, a registration site where you have all your listings and people can register and it updates dynamically, that's something that you would be able to do with Enterprise CMS. The other, por the other portion of the Enterprise CMS is um, governance and security controls. So there's heightened levels of like, uh, different controls that you can implement for who can access what content um, and audit logging, code alerts, Lambda functions, I'm not entirely sure how any of this works, but a lot of it is very um, focused on people who have larger teams and greater um, IT concerns. Uh, there's a lot more resources on this in the uh, CMS product page, uh, which I believe I've linked in the resources, um, as well as the Hub, CMS Hub security and IT page. It kind of breaks down why someone would want enterprise CMS, since it is obviously a bit more expensive. It's for people who have a little bit more sophisticated needs. Hopefully that answered your question. Oh, absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. And, and a follow on really, um, themes is the biggest thing that HubSpot have introduced really in, in, in the CMS in, in this launch. Um, there's obviously a number of themes that come uh, out of the box uh, and also through the marketplace. Are HubSpot themselves going to be extending that theme collection? Because, you know, off the top of my head, I can probably think of a hundred different themes that would be really good to build. Or are you looking for the partner community to, to flesh that out? I think it's a little bit of both. I know that the team, they wanted to launch with a really strong core set of themes, which I believe there are six or eight in there right now. Um, but there's definitely going to be more built by HubSpot over time. But in terms of the partner community, I mean, they're like the greatest resource ever for creating much, much more than HubSpot can do ourselves. So definitely be leaning on the partner community a lot for creating custom themes, not only for download or purchase in the marketplace, but for, you know, one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with clients. So it's a little bit of both. No, thank you for that. Cool. So now that we're getting pretty close to the end of our time here, um, I'm just, just going to do a quick recap and end out the session. So let me make sure I can get this. Great. So here's some next steps and resources if you want to continue learning. Obviously, there's a lot more than we could cover in this short time here together, um, but hopefully you'll want to go out and continue learning about CMS Hub. So quickly going over what we learned today about creating pages in CMS Hub. Your theme is your source of truth when it comes to your website's design. Themes contain a set of templates, all with the same branding. Every page in the CMS is created by using a template. And the relationship between templates and pages is one to many. And the last thing is to always preview your changes before publishing, whether you're changing your theme settings or your global header, um, or you're publishing a page and you want to preview on, on mobile, always make sure you preview your changes before you publish something live. Uh, we'll be sharing out a survey after this, so please share your thoughts on how this went. We definitely want to hear from you. 
And here's a few resources that you can use to continue learning. Um, the first is the CMS for Marketer certification. This is a brand new certification that goes over uh, the tools we listed today, as well as much, much more. There's also the developer certification, um, the user guide, and some knowledge-based articles for getting started. Um, and obviously the main product page for the CMS uh, and pricing page are resources for more specific questions about pricing and functionality. So the last thing is if you want to connect with me on social media, there is my Twitter and my LinkedIn. I'm not very active on social media, but I do try. Um, but definitely also follow HubSpot Academy on Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, that account is very active and that's where you can follow to learn about new courses, lessons, certifications, um, and any updates from HubSpot Academy. So thank you so much. Um, I was really glad by all the questions that you had. Hopefully I was able to answer most of them. I know there was a lot coming in fast and furious in the chat and the Q&A, um, but this recording and the slides will be posted on the HubSpot community, as well as answers to any questions that we weren't able to get to. Uh, the chat will be saved in that recording as well, so you can go back through and see kind of uh, the different resources that we've shared out. Um, and yeah, follow up if you have any more questions on that thread. And thank you so much for having me and for, for participating today.